The Tao of Self-Confidence, Episode 490. Welcome to the Tao of Self-Confidence, where I share stories of amazing women who have discovered their inner journey to self-confidence. Visit our website at thetaoofselfconfidence.com. Your inner journey to self-confidence awaits. Well, hello, friend. Welcome to the Tao of Self-Confidence, where I share stories of amazing women who have discovered their inner journey to self-confidence. I'm your host today, Sheena Yapchan, and today I have a phenomenal lady on the show today. She's a venture investor and also the co-founder of Lean In Malaysia, and I'm just really excited to have her on and share her story with us today on self-confidence. So without further ado, I'm going to introduce you to Sarah Chen. Sarah, how are you today? Maybe you can fill in a little bit more about yourself to our listeners. Hi, everyone. Thanks so much, Sheena, for this interview. Really glad to be sharing my story with your many listeners you have across the globe. So a little bit about me. Um, I grew up actually in the media industry as young as nine years old. I was on national TV in Malaysia, did that for about six years, where we were working on different issues that affected children. It was a TV show that was on every Sunday before the Sunday cartoon. So that's a little bit of a fun fact. And now years later, I've completed my degree in law. I read law in King's College London and went on to run a family business for a couple of years and then proceeded to then become a venture investor where I was in the partnering team of setting up a venture capital unit. Uh, with allocated investments of about $100 million. And yeah, I'm continuing to work in the corporate investment space, really excited about it. And at the same time, similar to you, Sheena, I had a very strong inkling to empower women. I saw how there weren't enough women represented in the workplace, in senior leadership, in places where you would think that, hey, in today's day and age, women should be up there and doing what they should be doing, which is living their full potential. So that's where I started Lean in Malaysia together with my co-founder. And it's become a platform that has about 300,000 women across Asia now. We collaborate with the many different chapters across Asia under the Lean in Asia brand. And we continue to educate, empower, and enable women into leadership, whether that's through accelerator programs or talk series, dialogue series, or even what we call the unconference sort of sessions that we have. Awesome. Well, thanks for sharing that. And I think that's great that you use, you know, this platform to empower women out there, especially yeah, in the workplace, right? Sometimes we feel like we're in a man's world, but you know, we have to realize we just, we are as capable as we are and we have talents and skills that we can go out there to create a difference in the world. So thanks for sharing that. And Sarah, what's your cultural background? So I am Malaysian Chinese. So my both my parents are of Chinese descent. I believe my great grandfather came over to Malaysia to help with the trade uh, back in the day and the rest is history. Awesome. Well, thanks for sharing that. And what would be your favorite self-confidence quote? My favorite self-confidence quote would be knowing who you are and living your full potential, having faith in yourself taking that first step, even if you don't see the whole flight of the staircase. Thanks for sharing that great quote. And, you know, in your own words, how do you define self-confidence? I think self-confidence is, like I said, knowing who you are. You might not always see the full picture of where you're supposed to be in life and where you're supposed to be in the exact same moment. But having that level of trust in yourself to be able to take any challenge, whatever comes your way, I think that is ultimately self-confidence because it then becomes a, a, a state, right? You can't always say, you know, times are good, I'm confident now, and times are bad, I'm not confident now. But it's just how you are, how it's that state of being, having trust and faith in yourself more than anything. Thanks for sharing that. And I love that definition. I know sometimes, you know, we're so we always want to have like fast results, right? If we don't get it, we feel like we've failed. We don't see things in a bigger picture. Sometimes, you know, what we see in our heads, it's not what appears in real life. And, you know, instead of trying to reason, um, you know, trying to overanalyze it, we just have to realize like something good comes out of this, right? There's a lesson to be learned or, you know, something else is supposed to happen. And we just have to, like you mentioned, trust in ourselves and just keep going. So I really love what you mentioned. And Sarah, what was your life like before your discovery of self-confidence? What was my life like before? That's that's an interesting question. So 
I wouldn't actually pinpoint that exact moment, but maybe it was before I managed to get through the audition to become a TV presenter when I was younger. And I think, so I was nine years old and I remember that very moment I think I missed the deadline for signing myself up and I went back home a little bit disappointed and a little bit, I guess, less confident in who I am, if, if I could put it that way. And I think I, I, it was a conversation with my father that really changed things around. He was very quick to say, what happened? Okay, let's change things around. We can still try. And he actually went up to speak to the producer that was managing the auditions in the nick of time and got me through. And that changed my life and my trajectory forever. So that moment of feeling down and depressed, I think that was uh, how would I would describe myself before discovering self-confidence and really being empowered by my father. That changed things for me. So I think maybe that is something that I remember quite specifically from, from my childhood and on self-confidence. Thanks for sharing that. And you know, it's great that your father encouraged you, right? Sometimes when we miss a deadline, we feel like it's the end of the world, right? And then like you mentioned, we get disappointed, our confidence goes down. And sometimes it just takes one person to change the course of our life, right? Like your father decided, let's just go and try anyways. No, there's nothing to lose. And actually, instead, you actually gained, right? Like you got to go to the audition and, you know, were there other moments in your life when you realize you can go out there and, you know, create an impact, especially creating, you know, lean in? Was there an aha moment? An aha moment on creating impact. So I would say that, you know, lean in Malaysia, the, if, if you know the story of how it came about, I speak about it a lot because I think it's such a wonderful experience that has changed all our lives, all of us that have been involved in the organization. I would say, you know, it started with me and just my co-founder putting in literally a hundred dollars each to invite a couple of our friends to talk about something we cared about, which was how do we get more women in leadership? And it was also from our own intentions to see that for ourselves, right? We wanted to think, okay, yes, we don't see enough, but if we were to do it, how would we do it? Let's get people who have done it to hear from them and learn from them and invite a couple of friends along the way. And I think the aha moment was when that small event, which was meant to be, I think, just 20 people, just by us publicizing the event on our Facebook, our social media channels. And we were, you know, in our early 20s, right? So it didn't seem that we were particularly influential or anything like that. But the event was more than sold out for the first time. We had, I think, 80 people that signed up and we had to answer to the speaker saying that, oh, okay, guys, you know, this is a lot bigger than we expected. But it just showed us that Malaysian, young Malaysians wanted to, to succeed, whether that's men or women. We had both in our audience. But importantly, the women that were there were asking questions on fulfilling their ambitions. So it occurred to us that, hey, you know, this is a niche that's not addressed and there's something that we can do about it. And the big, big aha moment was, I would say, when a thousand people showed up at our summit the first time when we were just getting our act together working with government, working with corporates, working with other nonprofits to see more women in leadership. And we realized that, hey, uh, you know what? The question was go big or go home. We decided to go big. This was the result. That's the aha moment. We have to keep going. We have to fight this fight. Thanks for sharing that. And I think that's an amazing story, right? Sometimes, you know, we do things because there's something that we feel like there's a need, right? There's something missing that we can, you know, go out there and, and just take action, right? I mean... Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's not easy. I'm sure you've gone through many obstacles, but we push through. And, you know, like you mentioned, a thousand people, I mean, even 80 people, it's such a great, you know, accomplishment, but to go from like 20, 80, and then a thousand. And I know now a lot more, it's just like, you know, you look back and you're like, wow, I can't believe I've created this, right? Like you and your your co-founder. And it's like, you know, it's so amazing how many men and women you're you're helping out there. And because of that, what's your life been like now? I would say my life has changed forever. I think I have a you know, they, they say that leadership is something that a lot of people aspire to, but I also think it's not just uh, a right, it is a privilege and a responsibility. So now I think in everything that I do, you know, I've always grown up to want to make an impact. I think my, the sort of four words that I have for my own life is to live, to love, 
to love and to matter. And the fourth part of it, you know, to matter means to actually do something that impacts someone's life beyond yourself. And I think since then, it's always been, what can I do next? How can I make things better? And how can I strive to create the level of impact that I can, you know, within my capacity? Or who can I engage to further inspire a whole generation of things? That's, that's a big dream. But I think that's something that I have on my cards. It's not just about living my best life, but it's also about living my best life so that I can inspire and empower others. And whether that's in you know, a year's time or two years time or the next decade of my life, that will always be the theme since then. So yeah, I think in everything that I do, I'm trying to be the best level of what I can be and to also help each each person that I meet along the way. Awesome. Well, thanks for sharing that. And that's great, you know, and I like how you mentioned your know, leadership is a privilege and a responsibility. Um, I think some people forget like, you know, the things that we do, sometimes people, you know, can notice it and some people use that leadership for personal gain versus like you know serving others right so i i really love that you know what you do is always to empower others you do things to to serve people to help people create a positive impact in their lives so thanks for sharing that and to the woman who's listening to your episode you know she may be in her own journey of self-confidence what would be that one tip you would give to her that one tip i would give to her is to believe in herself Come what me, I really sincerely believe in that in this that every woman that I've met has been through a lot in their lives. Whatever it may be, she will get through because I've seen this in, in my mother and my grandmother and in the women that I work with, there's nothing that she cannot overcome. And I say this specifically for women because so I know you have some Asian listeners, but there is this uh, Cantonese word of describing a woman, Loyan, right? So that means that she can sort of handle everything. And and I really believe that. So if you're in a tough spot or whatever it is, trust yourself, it will be okay, you will get through it. And beyond that, you will shine and thrive. Thanks for sharing that. Those are great tips that you mentioned. And it's so true. You know, as women, we go through a lot. And I think people forget that. And sometimes we feel like we're the only ones going through it. But you know, it's, it's, we're not right there's women out there who go through you know similar situations and knowing that we can come out of it knowing that if one person can do it then you know another person can do it as well at least just believing what is possible so thanks for sharing that and if our listeners wanted to get to know a little bit more about you and what you do or check out um, your events is there any links or social media profiles we can connect with sure so i'm personally on sc that's my initial sarah chen followed by my full name sarah chen so sc sarah chen.com SC Sarah Chen on Twitter, LinkedIn, and Instagram. So feel free to connect. Love to hear from you. I am in touch with lots of women across the globe, and it's something I'm passionate about. So happy to connect and see what we can do together. Awesome. Well, thanks for sharing that. And to our listeners, if you want to connect with Sarah, you can also head on over to the TaoSelfConfidence.com and search for Sarah's name. Her show notes will pop up along with everything else that we talked about. And I just really want to thank Sarah today for taking the time to share her story and tips with us on self-confidence. So thank you so much. You're most welcome, Sheena. Thanks again. And to our listeners, be on the lookout for another new episode of Another Amazing Woman's Journey to Self-Confidence. And we'll talk to you soon. Bye for now. Thank you for tuning in to another amazing episode of the Tao of Self-Confidence. Want to learn how you can use podcasting to market your business? Download your free report by visiting our website at thetowofselfconfidence.com. Your inner journey to self-confidence awaits.